we had an incident on this side of the hull when we were propping it up it crushed a little bit and we had thought that the hull was crushed but it was just the bottom paint because it's like caked on there like cray cray so we have to uh, do the bottom paint which we weren't really planning on doing so that kind of is a, is a bummer but I guess you gotta just do it if you wanna if you wanna live the life you gotta just do it, do it. Previously on Sailing Nine Lives we mixed up some white marine topside paint and got to work striping our hulls. The transoms got a new coat of white and then we sanded the blue top coat down before applying a layer of clear coat to complete the hull transformation. I think this boat is a 50 footer. That's the stuff. The boat had at least three thick layers of hard barrier coat applied to the bottom. In some places, it was even cracked and chipping off. It was time to remove it so we could repaint it with a bladed marine bottom paint. I wanted to avoid turning most of the bottom paint into dust, so we tried painting on aqua strip and we covered that with plastic wrap so it wouldn't dry out before it could soften up the paint. Okay, so that is my first test area of applying aqua strip and covering it over with plastic wrap. You're supposed to wait a minimum of four hours before scraping off the softened paint. Did it work? So I applied the stripper to a few test areas and then I waited. Alright, this has been on for four hours, so I'm going to take it off and uh, we'll see how it does after four hours. I thought that it would stay more wet under this plastic wrap. Oh yeah, an actual paint stripper that doesn't uh, deform when you put pressure on it. Much better. Cool. After waiting four hours, I found that the stripper was actually starting to dry out, even with the plastic wrap on top. The paint was definitely softened, but really not all the way through. I could scrape off the two top layers for the most part, so this became my stripping method, the first pass at it anyway. We actually started to strip the bottom paint, which is why you can see that it looks kind of all ganked up right here. The previous owners must have had a bunch of... Um, osmotic blisters? Osmotic, osmotic blisters. The boat had some pimples, which they popped and, and patched up, but there were so many. Like here, you can see there was definitely one. There's definitely one. But I mean, it looks like it's held up pretty well. I, we didn't find any blisters this time, so no big deal. Lay down a bit more stripper and plastic wrap. That's one more section that's about to get stripped. <sighs> well, this is a lot easier than uh, sanding all that bottom paint off. This is still a lot of work, especially out here in the heat. Here's how I'm progressing with this bottom stripping operation. I come by in the morning before work and uh, an hour, including travel time back and forth, applying some stripper, covering it with the plastic wrap so it doesn't dry too fast. And then I come back here over lunch, scrape it all off. Rinse and repeat. Next day, I'll move on to another section further down the hall. Mmm. Twin strippers.
Looking on the bottom where this thing is sitting, kind of looks like it's crushed up. And it's sitting kind of where this bulkhead is supposed to be. But this whole thing here is pushed up here. It's me to believe that there is some distortion here on the bottom and maybe this big old crack really is damage. But yeah, clearly look, this moved over. You can see by the clear line and the, it feels like silicone actually, it's soft. So I set the boat down on blocks here in the front and in the back, the blocks are here. However, when I look here underneath, uh, there's an area that appears to be, mm, we'll say distorted, maybe crushed is a better word, I don't know. And there's evidence inside that things have moved around a bit and there might be a crack, I don't know. I'll figure that out when I move the boat and if I have to, I'll repair it. But I ended up looking inside and I made marks here. This is relatively, anyway, in line with the bulkhead that is absolutely there for the forward flotation chamber. And then towards the back, this little mark here, there's a bulkhead immediately in front of uh, where the water tanks would be underneath the bunks. So when I repaint the bottom, I'm going to paint everything I can except where the blocks currently are. And then I believe I'm going to move the blocks to these positions so that one, I can finish painting the bottom in the areas where the blocks currently are, but also so I have an opportunity to correct whatever damage I may have caused here. So I'm just doing my first pass, 60 grit paper. Not quite done with the side of this one hull, but I think it's gonna take a few passes. I'm gonna do what I can to knock off all of the loose paint that seems to chip off and has little cracks in it. Then I'll rinse it all down and I'll take another pass. I think this is the cleanest I've looked when sanding this boat. Usually my face looks kinda like that. The proper roller. Ugh. Well, if you shake it like that, we can Anti fouling see. bottom paint. Ooh, that guy. Ooh. Get out of here. You go on, get. <laughs> I told him. He looked at me and I looked at him. All right. Look, we're going to paint black first because we're going to go by the theory that you paint one color and you paint the other color, and over time, when the ablative paint comes off, you see the other color, and you're like, oh, it's tying the paint. Lots of people disagree with that. I don't know. I'm just doing it. That was a really good video. I'm just doing it. Doing it, doing it, doing it. Right? We're gonna put black, and then we're gonna put red, so you can see red. Okay, so let's explain the where you're gonna tape. I already taped. No, no, around the block. All right, come around over here. Look, I taped here, right? No, don't hit the boat. Because we're gonna paint here. You're being stupid. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you're. I know. Okay. I'm telling the whole story. Okay. All right. Now look at this. You see this? The boat is sitting on wood. can't paint between the boat and the wood. So, we're gonna paint almost to it. Maybe a few inches away from the wood, we're gonna paint black. And let's leave that area exposed, because eventually we're gonna paint it. When we go paint the red on top, we're only gonna paint it up to, you know, a couple inches away from the black. Kind of stage it that way. When we do correct the bare spots, we can kind of feather the paint in a little bit better and there won't be an obvious lump. Not that that's a big deal either, but that's you what have, we're doing. You have a problem with lumps? Lumps. What about bumps? No bumps. Baby bumps are good. At some point, when we put the two layers of paint on here, we're going to lift the boat up a little bit, remove the blocks, probably fix the bottom where I broke it, if I broke it. I don't know if I broke it. I might have broken it. 
and then we'll paint the two layers of paint where the blocks were. All right. Looking good, bud. Yeah. You, know, you make my mom so proud. No, she had it. She would use a brush, not a roller. She would use a brush, but I've never known a woman like my mother to paint so many boat bottoms. And she's uh, gonna watch this, and she's gonna smile and beam with pride. I've only painted one boat bottom. Yeah, but it's your first. It's your first, baby. And that's true. Think. Growing up at the marina in South Jersey, my mom painted a lot of boats. Rental boats, customers boats. She had a red jacket she would wear splattered with paint. She loved it. Well, probably not, but she sure did paint a lot of boats. Nice job, lady. Oh my gosh, this project's taking too long. <laughs> what do you have to say for yourself? I'm sorry. What'd you do? I made you paint the whole ball, baby. Yeah, you did. You definitely did. We got the second layer of bottom paint done. She's looking pretty good. Super excited to pull off that painter's tape and reveal the finished product. Yeah. You look good, babe. Thanks. You look good. Oh, yeah. She looks good. Getting there. Nine lives. Okay, I'm almost ready to jack this thing up so I can reposition the blocks so that ultimately I can paint the unpainted spots that it's currently sitting on. Also lower the center boards somewhat so I can paint at least the bottom 18 inches of them. The bottom 18 inches being the portion of the center board that is always sitting in water of some sort. So I've pre-positioned some of the blocking. I've got pieces there that'll get inserted. So really I'm gonna move everything from here to here underneath. You see that little piece of tape? That's where there's a, uh, a bulkhead. So I'm gonna position it over there properly. And uh, I'm gonna do something similar in the back. That'll be the next step. Move those blocks a bit aft. How much planning you think you've done it always ends up changing last minute so this is what i have in the front the ground actually slopes down towards that side of the boat so you'll notice there's actually an extra two by six or something like that jammed under there in the pile it's all stacked up evenly supporting the same amount of weight here and i've got my little wedges in there to make sure everything distributes the weight evenly along the top board so that's what i've got now i gotta jack up the back Maybe a couple centimeters. That's because this 
boat is actually extremely rigid. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, all four corners are bearing weight nicely. I didn't hear any cracking, which is good. Yeah. Because um, I really don't want this boat to crack, bub. I don't want it to crack. Up here, where the depth transducer is mounted, the bottom of the hull flexed a bit when I had it on the blocks. And I'm finding layer upon layer of this. It looks like just thick pores that were laid in here with little or no fiberglass at all. And that of course has zero strength. Finding lots of that in here. Actually just ahead of the transducer, like here. There's the hull, and then there's this quarter inch thick of poured in epoxy. It only goes up a few more inches and then stops, but it's since it flexed, it all, well, say delaminated, although I would say it was barely laminated, it was just poured in here, uh, it all cracked. And uh, so now I'm just chipping out all the loose stuff because that's going to be in my way. Let's see if I can get this off without the appropriate wrench. To access the entire crack, which appears to be just in the inside layer of resin, I decided to remove the depth transducer. Doing this would leave a big hole in the bottom of the hull, but repairing the crack was important because we don't want to sink. We're going to seal up the hole and later remount the transducer inside the boat. It can sound right through the fiberglass, and we'll end up with one less hole in the boat. I think I should be able to pop this out the bottom. And then of course I have to deal with the cabling. Look at that. A little perseverance, a hammer. <laughs> I removed the washer before the nut, and this should just push out at this point. Aha. The big hole in the boat! Ah! Cool. I'm clean that up. I see discussions online about people talking about, oh, yeah, when I mount my transducer or blah, 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 the hull is an inch thick or even a half inch thick, whatever. <laughs> Here, on this old Gemini, we're looking at a quarter inch, at least in this part of the hull. So, they're definitely built light. Not to say that they're built poorly, but definitely built lightweight. And uh, it's really no wonder that this whole thing flexed a little bit when there was weight put in the wrong spot. Interesting. You don't want to get fiberglass dust all over you. Fiberglass dust on your skin it might be really itchy and annoying. You get it in your lungs, it's going to be annoying for life. Don't breathe fiberglass dust, kids. Okay, there's the bottom of my blue tape, my dust shield, if you will. Um, just confirming, yeah, we got about a quarter inch here. So if we have a quarter inch thick, we want to grind out outside of this about 12 to 1. So we're going to grind it out about three inches out so we can feather the fiberglass. Well, first I'll measure out a couple parts three inches out and then I'll end up drawing a circle or something. Well, a circle. Doesn't have to be something. <laughs> it should be a circle three inches from this edge. Look at that, left-handed. Oh, oh. That's pretty good. Pretty terrible, but pretty good. Well, there's my cute little grindy circle. There we go. Let's grind this fiberglass.
All right, I'm gonna call that done. Okay, I'm getting set up for all my patches. When I drew these, I gave each of them a number. The larger the number, actually, the smaller the circle. And I'm just cutting them out in order, alternating between mat and cloth, and then just putting them in a stack over here. Okay, I have 13 layers for the outside of the round patch. I have eight layers for the inside of the round patch. Uh, and then I have some fillers here for cracks and voids that are sort of on the interior that I just wanted to put a little bit more material in and then two layers here to just kind of patch over the whole area on the inside. This little guy. Hey guy. Ah. Anyway, um, get off my patch dude. Come on. Go, go, go. Go. <laughs> Clean it up real quick with acetone one more time before we begin. All right, 250 mils of this resin. That'll be a quarter liter. That's probably way too much, but whatever. Let's just see. It's probably way too much. That just looks like way too much for a silly little patch. All right, there's the resin. 50 mils of hardener. Alright, got our hardener. I need to stir it for about a minute. It seems like way too much. This is going to generate a lot of heat. I probably should have done it in a shallow pan, but I didn't know how to do that and measure it at the same time. So, I uh, guess I'll take my chances with this. Alright. Piece one. I'm gonna wet it out. Yes, here. Not on the boat yet. And again, it shouldn't stick to this plastic. If it does, we're in trouble. Not real trouble. We just have to start over again. Alright. Take this bad boy. Alright. The patch is actually getting pretty warm. And there's heat coming out of the bucket. Alright. A lot of heat. Well, I think it's time to just put this patch on and I think we're almost done at our time limit here. So I'll have to set up, mix up another batch of resin. Wow, that when it clicks, it kicks so fast. It's like immediate. All right, let's slap this bad boy up here. And I guess we'll mix up a second batch of resin to do the laminating. Wow, wait. That's crazy. No big deal, though. It's good to know. Fast hardener hardens super fast. <laughs> Look at this. This is hot and solid. Look at that. Oh my god. That is some hot resin, baby. Woo! Probably want to clean that roller with acetone so I can reuse it. This. Hard as a rock now. <laughs> it's done. Look at that. It generates a lot of heat when you have it thick like that. It can set stuff on fire if you're not careful. That's cool. Kind of looks like amber, doesn't it? For this little second pass at that patch on the outside, I'm gonna make less resin. So I'm gonna do 150 milliliters total. So that's 25 mil of the hardener. 125 milliliters of the resin so that should be more than enough and hopefully I can use it all up before it kicks so put some resin up here Ooh, dripping all over the place lovely I'm gonna wet it 
Oh, I really consider how hard this will be to wet this upside down. <laughs> I don't know. Do what I gotta do. Alright, we'll call that done for now. I'm gonna mix up a fair amount. Hopefully I can stretch the time a little bit. So, much like I did my very first pour for the outside patch, I'm gonna go for 300 milliliters here. 250 of the resin, 50 of the hardener. That overboard. <laughs> I'm gonna apply this patch, the round part, probably what would be considered backwards, but I don't know, because it's on the inside, I think it makes some sense to do it this way. So I'm actually gonna put in the smallest patch first. I'm gonna go quick, right? Quick, quick, quick. But I gotta work quick, so I don't want this to kick before I'm ready. I smell it. That might be kicking already. Don't look like it yet. It's starting to get kind of hot down here. Ooh, it's kicking. I can see it smoking off my brush. Yeah, it's kicking right here in the bucket. Right. I don't know if you can see it. It's smoking. Smoking good. this a little bit while I can. Still able to manipulate it a bit. All right. I think I'm gonna go mix up one small batch so I can lay these two cover pieces in. And uh, I'll do it because this hasn't obviously cured yet. It's gonna take a while, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna layer that in right on top. Last batch, so 125 milliliters of resin. 25 milliliters of hardener. Carry it in my metal bucket for safety. Final application of fiberglass and resin for this repair slash patch job. These two layers of fiberglass uh, mat and cloth that I put down are really just to tie the whole patch in with the rest of the hull. I don't think they're actually necessary at all, but I've seen it recommended that you do stuff like this, so that's what I'm doing. Oh, it's kicking in a bucket. That means it's uh, soon to kick laid out here. I wish I had just a little bit more resin. But I know. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I think we'll call this interior part done. You didn't forget that the entire point of all this was just so we could finish painting the bottom, did you? With the blocks moved and the damage repaired, we could finally finish up the bottom paint. If we had blocked the boat up higher or dug a pair of holes, we could have painted the center boards entirely. But for this bottom paint job, we decided to just repaint the bottom portions of each. The areas left unpainted earlier were painted, and we could finally say that this job was complete. In our next episode, we finally bring our U.S. Coast Guard documented vessel up to code with a proper name and hailing port on the stern. Final stripes are added as a final touch. We give our 35 year old dinghy a once over. And at long last, we drop nine lives back into the water. Hey, what are you doing? Oh. Did you see how dirty I am? You're really good. Cool. Oh.